During mission one, start up, taxi and take off. Welcome to the first training lesson on the B-24P Hind helicopter. Today we'll learn basic procedures to start and take off this bird. B-24 is a two-seat helicopter operated by a pilot and co-pilot gunner, also known as a weapon operator. Use keyboard keys 1 and 2 to switch between seats. In this lesson, we will act as a pilot and occupy the utmost cockpit situated behind the operator's one. So, we begin. First, switch on all the circuit breakers on the right and left back walls. Use the support metal frames to move them up all at once. Or use keyboard keys, right control plus right shift plus one, and right control plus right shift plus two. Turn to the right side and switch on both batteries on the right electric deck. Then locate the power from bed switch. Open the cover and put the switch to the up position. Activate PO750A power inverter. Watch the appropriate light is lit about the switch. If you are, close the door by clicking the door handle with the mouse. Or use left control plus C. Pressurize the cockpit by opening the pressure valve on the left side. Rotate the wheel handle counterclockwise by dragging it to the left down direction with the mouse. Release the main rotor shaft brake by lowering the brake lever on the right side of the seat. Turn to the left and up a bit and locate the fire protection panel. Move master switch and fire extinguisher switches to the up position. Switch on service tanks, fill cutoff valves, crossfeed and transfer pumps for all tanks. If you are equipped with external tanks, switch the appropriate external tanks rocker to the up position also. At the next step, we'll start the auxiliary power unit, APU. During APU start, we have to monitor battery voltage do not drop below 18 volts. In order to do this, rotate the voltmeter selector two notches to the bad position. Now, we are ready to start the APU. Check if APU start crank falls start rocker set to start position. Then press an APU start button and hold for 2-3 seconds until APU comes to life. Push the right button of the board clock. While APU is spinning up, please monitor. Exhaust gas temperature rises but not exceeds 880. Voltage is not below 18 volts. The green after on light should go out during the first 30 seconds after the start. When APU goes idle, check if green APU normal RPM lamps is lit. Green normal oil press lamp is lit. EGT readings don't exceed 720. It's the right time to start main helicopter engines. We must start from the leeward tension. Today the wind blows from the right, so we have to start the left engine first. Check if the engine side rocker crank start set to start and the engine start selector switch is set to left engine position. Press the start button and hold it for 2-3 seconds until the left engine comes to life. Immediately lower the left engine stop lever. Failing to do so will terminate the normal starting procedure. Use right control plus page up and convenient. The engine should come to idle power in no more than 60 seconds. Monitor the following parameters during spin-up. Green auto on and amber starter on lights up. Steady RPM increase and main rotor blade starts to move. Oil pressure at 45% of turbine RPM 
is not lower than one kilogram per square centimeter. Amber starter on light should turn off at 60-65% of RPM. Green auto on light should maintain the lead state no more than 33 seconds. Warning, during each engine startup, it's forbidden to move aircraft control sticks, engine RPM handle, or swing engine start selector rocker to another engine. When the left engine goes idle, repeat the procedure for the right engine. Select right engine by switching the engine start rocker to right position first. This was supposed to go to 65%. Appears to stabilize. Let's do the right engine. Lower the right mm -hmm. engine stop lever to down position. Check warning lights, RPM, temperature increase, and oil pressure gauges for normal readings. Wait until engines run at idle for one minute. Note, in the case of prolonged APU warm-up or engine test runs, engage the APU generator to provide battery recharge using the APU generator switch on the right electric panel. Do not forget to temporarily switch it off during the engine start phase to avoid possible APU overload. Activate dust filters prior to increasing torque. It's forbidden to increase RPM until engine oil temperature reaches 30 degrees and main gearbox temperature below minus 50. Place the mouse cursor over the collective stick grip to press the right mouse button and rotate the grip marked gas clockwise using a mouse wheel. You can use page up key instead. Page up key as same as gazelle. speed reaches 95 plus minus 2, engage main generators on the right electric panel. Watch the right electric panel, red warning lamps, LH generator out and RH generator out, turn, turn both PO750A and power from battery switches back to off position. Switch the main 115 and 36 volts transformers on, moving the rockers to the up position. Switch on balls rectifiers. Stop IPU turbo engine, pressing stop IPU button on the left side. Turbo engine? Okay. Power on the guidance system by switching comp system rocker to the up position. 
Power on both vertical charger systems. Now we have to test the gyros using ADI and pitch roll indicators. First, depress for one or two seconds corresponding cage buttons for both vertical gyros on the main instrumental deck. Watch both red gyro warning lamps above the buttons go off. Also, notice red markers on ADI pitch and roll indicator go off. ADI indication should coincide with current aircraft pitch and roll parking angles. Set adjust tab switch to on. Now the red warning lamp located to the right diminishes and zero indicator bar settles near the center according to the current ambient air density. That indicates the normal walking state of SPUU-52. Note that at near sea level altitudes, low or moderate temperatures when air density is high, the bar may settle to the right of center. In the conditions of low air density, the bar may stay in the leftmost position. In the next step, we'll engage autopilot control channels. Use backspace key to hide the sticks and obscuring cockpit elements in the case of autopilot panel is not reachable by the mouse. You may also make the left mouse click on the forward edge of the seat to produce the same action. To press three green on buttons to activate, press backspace again to show hidden sticks back. Look to the left and power on all radio and communication systems. Switch radio altimeter, Doppler, blink, radar warning power and IFF system to on. In three minutes after the guidance system is powered, you may align it. Look to the bottom panel. Check if the three position mode selector is set to mark. Then depress alignment button for three seconds. It's set to what? If you need to strafe your view down, use right count oh plus right shift plus down two keyboard combination. Press down five to center the view back. Three seconds, okay. One, two, three. Set ARK 15 panel mode switch to come position. Power on the ARKU2 directional finder panel, located under your left elbow. Switch air conditioner mode to condition on the right panel under your right elbow. This will bring conditioned air to the cockpit. What do we need the fan ready for then? To start taxi, proceed with the following. Release parking brake, left shift plus W. Push the cyclic stick forward smoothly and increase the pitch of the main rotor by gently lifting the collective stick. Lower the collective stick when the helicopter starts to move. Use short anti torque pedal pushes to adjust moment direction. Maintain slow forward motion with longitudinal movements of cyclic control stick and wheel brakes when needed. Do not exceed the speed of 20 km per hour. Enable control position overlay indication. Right cutoff plus enter to help you accommodate with controls. Turn left to the taxiway. Proceed taxi along the path to the runway. Turn left and land the forward wheel around the center line. 
1. Столок. Взлет по готовности. Отход по схеме на 300. Подавление. 7-1. We have to execute the Harrow Bower check before reach flight. Gently pull the control stick back and right. Then smoothly pull up the collective stick until the helicopter hangs its wheels 1-5 meters above the ground. Push the right pedal proportionally to compensate for the torque and constant tendency to make the left on. Control the longitudinal and lateral movements of the helicopter with the cyclic stick. So pull back and to the right. Don't know how much. Push the right pedal. Okay. I what? Check whether the main rotor speed is not less than ninety three percent at Howry. Gently move the collective down and lower the helicopter to the ground until steady on wheels. Today we will perform the rolling takeoff procedure. Increase the collective smoothly until the helicopter becomes light on the landing gear. Move the cyclic slightly forward of the neutral hovering position to start the forward movement. Maintain a straight ground track with the lateral cyclic and heading with anti torque pedals until a climb speed of 20 30 km per hour is established. Smoothly apply collective to full and pull cyclic a bit to get helicopter in the air. Maintain an altitude to take advantage of ground effect for a while. Then allow the airspeed to increase toward normal climb speed, those to get 70 km per hour of airspeed at 25 meters of altitude. Using G key, retract landing gear above 15 meters of the ground at 70 km per hour. When you use clickables in the cockpit, first release gear lever lock with the left mouse button prior to moving landing gear lever up. After takeoff and getting safe altitude, establish the normal climb power setting and switch off the dust filters. I don't know what the normal climb power setting is though. The lesson is over. Try again if you feel you are not perfect. Okay, lesson two. Navigation. Okay. Ooh, raining. Awesome. Welcome to the navigation practical training on Mi-24B hard helicopter. We will study the basic operating principles of the flight director, named Gribi. The usage of automatic direction finders ARK-15 and ARK-U2 and the Doppler navigation set D-50. At the end, you will be able to practice by yourself. Press spacebar to continue. Put the fan on this time. 
315 Is that just a Russian thing? Anyway The radio magnetic indicator RMI is installed in the front instrument panel It consists of a rotating course hidden scale fixed scale of radio magnetic beacon azimuth thin ADF needle for ARK fitting and thick ADF needle for ARK U2 the latter is also used as a course director tool. Both automatic direction finders, ADF, are used to navigate the helicopter to or from the beacon or any broadcasting radio station. The listening function is provided. Press space bar to continue. The ADF of ARKU2 type is combined with VHF2 R852 radio station, which is primarily used to harm the helicopter to emergency radio beacons. This ADF can also be switched to work with R828 radio station, capable of receiving civilian or military VHF broadcast. Now, switch on the power of the ARKU2 device. Let's tune up our 8 to 8 radio to receive a ground station. 
Sound signal on a browser channel 2. To do so, switch the channel selector handle to press and hold the out button. Watch the tuner lamp goes on while the tuning process is active, then goes off at the moment the tuning is completed. Switch SPU intercom selector to R828 position in order to listen to the broadcast. You should hear the sudden sound. The mobile radio station is broadcast. Now, uh, back to the ARU2 ADF and switch the finder to the bus of R828 radio source, switching it to campus R828 position. Look at the RMI on the instruments panel and select a source for a thick needle to be ARU2. The seat needle should start rotating, then stop, in the direction pointing to the mobile radio station. Okay, it's time to check the direction to the emergency beacon using VHF R852 radio receiver. The beacon is located to the east, in the vicinity of the final waypoint of our mission flight path. The receiver control panel is aesthetic. It consists of a volume knob and channel selector. Currently, the false emergency channel receiving at 1 to 1.5 MHz is selected. Press space bar to continue. Switch intercom to listen to signals from R852 by choosing the right mode. Listen the received signals by switching AR32 device. You can hear the mode signals of the vehicle. Okay, now try to find the other mode to the broadcasting station. Set ADF switch to COMP R852 position. As you can see, despite the signal is being heard, the strength is not enough for ADF to detect azimuth due to long distance. Uh, later in flight, we will close the distance and the RMI needle will catch a direction to it. Okay, proceed with the lesson to begin a flight to the fast radio waypoint. Uh, we will use the medium wave navigation beacons to fly to. Our helicopter is equipped with a specialized ARK-15M ADF device. This ADF supports two independent navigation beacons channels. Each channel can be pre-tuned to exact frequency set by individual dials. The walking channel is selected by the channel 1-2 switch. Leave the switch in channel 1 position and proceed with the left dial. Every dialer consists of three rotating rings. The outer ring sets hundreds of kilohertz. The middle one sets tens. The inner disk sets ones and halves. Press space bar to proceed. At every moment of the flight, you can check a map pressing F10 and find the info about all navigational homing beacons. The label consists of frequency and corresponding Morse code. The first homing beacon in this lesson broadcasts at a 682 kHz. The Morse code is MA. Press this bar to proceed with ABF frequency settings. Short while the cold sound becomes heard. Da da di da. It 
Being small and may. Set desired volume if needed by the corresponding lock. Press space bar after have clearly heard the above code. Okay, go for it. The co-pilot's cockpit is equipped with the same ARK-15 ADF device. Each crew member may take control of the ADF to himself by pressing the control brown button in the upper part of the panel. Once the ADF device detects the broadcast of desired frequency, the RMIT needle will show direction to the beacon. In this lesson, at the moment we pop the beacon, the needle will flip to the opposite direction, and we proceed to the next waypoint using Doppler navigation radar system. D-15. Press spacebar to follow. D-15 operation utilizes the Doppler effect. To measure ground speed, the receiver detects reflected signals from the transmitter of the ground. Obtained in this way, Doppler data is used by the coordinate calculation unit to guide the helicopter to the desired port. This 15 Doppler system operates with the vector data of desired point, true course and distance. You can see how it works on the F10 map. Use the ruler tool from the upper bar and click the left mouse button on the map at the point you want to activate Doppler radar. Then draw the line to the desired port. The digits shown by the line will show you the course and the distance you should enter to the Doppler system. Press space bar to continue. So this is probably the one I will use a lot. So it's arc 15. According to the flight plan, we should switch navigation to Doppler system at the moment we pass the first beacon and proceed 14 kilometers with the course 124 degrees. First, set the true course value of 124 degrees in the course and window of the DS control panel located in the front of the pilot's right knee. Pressing plus and minus buttons by the mouse, set 1, 2, 4 in the window. The long press will speed up the digit change in there. Press backspace if you need to ease the view and get a better access to the panel. One, two, four point zero. Close enough. The distance in kilometers is set in the appropriate middle window named distance KF. Pressing the left aft button, set the negative value of 14 kilometers and watch the back label has become shown, which means uh, you are 14 kilometers back of the desired point. You should know. Right after the moment you turn the D system on in the flight, the negative T. So, we've entered all required data to the D control panel. At the moment we press the turn on button, the continuous real time calculations of travel distance and aircraft position related to the flight path will be started. The topmost windows will show you the lateral deviation of the helicopter relative to the flight path and to which side, right or left, it occurs. Turn to the opposite direction a bit to return back to the flight path in this case until the lateral deviation should be zeroed again. Press space bar to continue. The wind has always been the main factor which produced the lateral deviation in the case of normal no-slip horizontal flights. A specialized ground speed and drift angle indicator is mounted on the front panel and intended to show you direction and the amount of drift that contribute to current deviation. In order to eliminate the lateral deviation from the flight path, the pilot should turn to the drift angle value and in the opposite direction. The three-digit window display shows the true ground speed. Note uh, that it is not capable of displaying values below 50 km 
parameters per hour. Also know that the this Doppler system cannot track the path and make fail-safe calculations when helicopter pitch and roll exceeds a plus minus seven degrees and plus minus thirty degrees respectively. In this case, the indicator switched to memory mode, displaying green M, and uses the latest available speed vector data. It helps much while maneuvering extensively, but leads to navigation error build-up. The longer the path lag, the more navigation accuracy suffers. Press space bar to continue. The bottom part of the DIS indicator is equipped with two selector switches. The left switch, test open, is self-explanatory. Use open position in normal flight. The right mode switch, C land is used to adjust this radar for the corresponding flying environment. Press space bar to continue. The this Doppler system provides data to the map indicator. The map indicator is an electromechanical device which mechanically moves ribbon crosshair over the map card, following the helicopter position in the real world. You can switch to a more detailed map card, if any. Uh, use a scale selector to switch to the large scale map card to get more details. If ribbon crosshair reaches the end of the map card, the pilot should manually select the next card and adjust the crosshair position with the knobs. So, let's go over our flight plan. Take off, turn and fly to the beacon. Fly over it and switch to this radar to fly the next leg. Follow the flight path, eliminating the lateral deviation which occurs. Take off. The route is rather short. There will be no problems. I like your optimism. There will not be any problems. <clears throat> so, everyone. So let's go over the flight plan, take off, turn and fly to the beacon, fly over it and switch to this radar. I don't know how to do that. Oh, that's this one, isn't it? Uh, maybe. Uh, hopefully it'll tell us. Right, let's get going then. Uh oh. Get off the ground. Turn. As far as you are in the air, turn to the direction of a beacon that thin RMI needle is pointing to. The RMI, which one's that? Is that the big needle or the small needle? Must be the small one, okay. Uh oh. Well, you probably need to turn that one on, don't you? Please uh, switch off the these drop the radar now. In this lesson, it is preset to be on at waypoint one only. Ah, okay, my bad. Oh, I didn't take off the parking brakes, that's why I went a bit wonky and take off. So the green M is on. 
can't remember what that means. I'm too high for the Doppler reader. Okay, let's get down a bit then. Swinging, so let's turn that on. This is on now. Check and adjust the course angle to 124 degrees with addition of the opposite drift angle, which is shown on the this indicator. Adjust your fly head if lateral deviation displays on the this control panel not nil and increasing. <laughs> normal flight. The distance to the emergency radio station is close enough to be detected by air car U2 IDF device. lower than this, I can... Okay, that's going the wrong way. Let's go this way a bit then. <coughs> This lesson is devoted to the lighting systems and lighting controls of the helicopter. Let's go. Ooh, that's pretty. Welcome to the Mi 24B Hind Lighting System lesson. Today, we will run the lighting controls available for all experiment. Press space bar to continue. The helicopter is equipped with a variety of lights that are used for navigation. 
navigation, safety, and to improve visibility in poor or night conditions. Those are internal, also known as cockpit lights and external lights. As you can see, the white light dome light is currently eliminating the cockpit, and it is the first example of internal lighting. Press space bar in order to learn further. Both cockpits are illuminated with white main fluid dome lights and standby red lights. Fluid lights are activated by the pilot CPG white off red switch on the lighting power panel on the left side of the pilot cockpit. You can find a similar cargo white off blue switch that is located to the left and controls the fluid lights of the cargo passenger compartment. Space bar to continue. Ah, here we go. Right, there we go. Red and both. Uh, actually, let's go back to white. The special uh, low intensity red lights are used to illuminate the instrument panel and various indicators. These lights are controlled by the three knobs labeled red lighting to the right of the seat. Turn the knobs to adjust the lighting intensity to desired level. Note, if the seat is obscuring the view, press backspace or left click the forward edge of the seat in the cockpit. Don't know what this one does. Right hand panel. Uh, two knobs on the forward red lighting panel adjust the lighting intensity for the rest of the instruments on the left and the panel itself. Turn them to Oak Stores light switch controls the status lights of the armed stores on the co-pilot's weapon panel, while the appropriate safety circuit breakers are on. Press space bar to proceed. Safety switches. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, yellow lights, okay. The map display illumination is controlled by the three position map light switch in the upper part of the panel. Select a bright or dim as this. It's time to move the lesson to the warning and emergency lamps. All these lamps are text labeled and use the three color scheme. Red lamps indicate the emergency state that requires the immediate crew involvement. Yellow lamps normally warn about the warning state of the system they belong to and require no immediate crew involvement. They often warn the crew about some missed action or incomplete activation of the link system. Green lamps are used to indicate the normal working state of most important and vital systems. Press space bar to continue. The functionality and fault-free operation of the warning lights can be checked by the test lights button. 
to attract uh, special crew attention to the warning or emergency lamp signals, the Brinker mode is used. While this mode is active, each active warning or emergency lamp will be blinking, thus uh, making the visual signal more noticeable. Uh, uh, you can press the test light again and see how the warning lights are blinking. Press space bar to proceed. There is a special day-night switch that controls the overall lighting intensity of sunlight according to lighting conditions of the environment. The night position prevents the illumination from being overbrighted. Press space bar to continue. Now, uh, move on to the external lights. Those lights consist of landing and taxi lights, plus various external service lights. The taxi light is mounted on the left side of the helicopter nose. Set the taxi light switch to upper position to power the taxi. In addition, a helicopter is equipped with a special retractable landing headlight mounted below the nose. It is a powerful tool to rig on the ground spot for landing and maneuvering. First space bar to proceed. The headlight is activated by the landing headlight control of retract switch. When set to control position, the power enables the unfolding mechanism and lights the headlight. Headlight hat located on the collective control lever head. You can use the following keyboard commands or set them to joystick. Left shift plus seven. Set. Headlight up. Left shift plus seven. Headlight down. Left shift plus nine. Headlight left. Left shift plus zero. Headlight right. Turn on the headlight. Ease of those. This with the headlight control. Trying to move the light spot forth, then enlighten the area around. Press space bar to continue. Yeah, shift plus zero. Use. To switch the headlight off, set the landing headlight switch to off position or set to retract in order to fold the headlight back to back and from any position. Okay, uh, let's proceed with the external service lights. These are navigation information, blade tip lights, beacon, flare illumination and gear lights. All these lights 
except for one major reason. Preventing mid-air or ground aircraft collision. Press space bar to continue. Navigation lights, also known as position lights. Give information on a craft's position, heading, and formation lights are used in closed formations to avoid collisions and as a visual cue to maintain position within a flight order. These lights are controlled by the three-position form lights switch on the left side panel. Uh, select the switch position of your desire. The switch located to the left powers on the blade tip lights. These lights are switched on already and ensure the main rotor blade control is perfectly visible for everyone in the dark conditions. Press space bar to continue. of systems. In this lesson you will learn to use the radar warning receiver and flare chaff dispensing system. Probably need to buy more keys, but okay. Ooh, hello, our show crowd. Welcome. Today we introduce the defensive okay, systems of the helicopter, consisting of RWR and flare chaff dispenser. The SPO-10 RWR detects the radar emissions and issues the visual and audible warnings when a radar signal that might be a threat is detected. Switch on the radar warning power switch on the left panel to enable RWR. 
the RWR indicator is located on the right of the instrument panel. The indicator forms a circle with lamps displaying the detected radars according to their direction relative to the current aircraft heading in four sectors. The RWR also produces an audible tone to pilot each time the radar is detected. Currently, the no sound sign is displayed in the center of the indicator. Activate RWR warning sounds by the radar warning signal switch on the left panel to hear the tone. In the case of straight ahead, directly behind, right or left detections, the radar issues are being received by two adjustment sector antennas, so the two adjacent lamps light up. If the radar switches from search or acquisition mode to tracking, the repetition rate of lights and sounds is increased. Press space bar to continue. A special red color shutter is used in the night conditions to dim the bright daytime indication. Turn the rim of the indicator in order to use day, T, or night, N mode. There is a check pin type button in the center of the indicator. It is used to test the RWR lamps and sounds. Uh, the RWR sounds are quite annoying. Uh, yes, switch they are. Again by the switch on the left side and press spacebar to proceed. Unguided weapon system emits radiation after launch, which interferes with radar bands and produces false warnings. So uh, the RVR receiver shuts down automatically. This peculiarity should be taken into account and preventive usage of the ASO to V Chaffler dispensing system should be considered. The ASO to reach our flare dispensing system is used to distract radar and IR guided missiles from the helicopter. Char flares are deployed in series of 4 or 16 decoys with 2 or 4 seconds intervals. These options are set on the ASO to V control panel in the copilot pocket. Press 2 to take the the ASO2V Chaffrayer Decoy Dispenser Control Panel is located on the right side of the cockpit. The topmost switch selects interval between decoy shots in each serial. The serial switch selects the number of shots in a serial. The choices are 4 and 16. Uh, below the switch, two red lamps are located to indicate the side the decoys are shot from. The jet button is used to launch the firing program. Each button press deploys a single server. A press space bar to proceed. Probably shouldn't have done that on the ground. What do all these other switches do then? Two switches marked 1LH and 2RH are designed to feed the power to chair flare dispensers on both sides of the helicopter. There are three lines of dispensers in a bulk on each side of the body, which might be chaff or flare type. The exact dispenser line can be selected by the four position switch marked as AC all sets. The false neutral position of the switch disables all dispensers. The combat chaffler mix loaded in dispensers is set up by mission editor and might be altered in the rearming menu before takeoff. The chaffler reader in the editor will determine the actual equipment of each dispenser set. Uh, now, jump back into the pilot seats pressing 1. Playing a 
as a pilot, you can command Petrovich, acting as AI co-pilot, to set up Jaffle experts. Petrovich AI interface, show height, left control plus V. Short left command, A, show high dispenser rigid. Short up command, W, set interval. Short right command, D, set series. Short down command, S, select site. A long down command, S, toggle jump flare. Using a special flare launch button on the left side near the fire panel, the pilot can launch jump flare program by his will. Press space bar to proceed. Hey, so interval pro. Hey, so interval two. Okay, whatever. Usually, all dispensers are loaded with flares only, as far as chaff decoys are considered to be ineffective in modern warfare without electronic countermeasures deployed. And that's all about defensive systems and measures you can take to counteract enemy radar and IR threats. Thanks. Next tutorial, guided missiles. In this lesson, we will learn firing procedures for Sturm B guided missiles, acting both as a pilot and co-pilot gunner. Oh, what's up in the head tracking? There we go. Welcome to the shooting range. Precise and effective target engagement with guided missiles on Mi-24 very much depends on coordinated activity of a pilot and gunner. While in active pose in this lesson, you will learn the proper procedures for perfect firing, practice in acquiring and designating the targets. Playing the pilot role, press backspace to hide the cockpit elements, preventing convenient interactions on the weapon control console. Ensure that a 9 pulse rotary is set to off MSL. I'll move the side switch to up position. Up position? Look up to the ASP-17 VP side. Switch Ottoman to auto position. Uh, press 2 to take the co-pilot gunner seat. Switch on the group of safety switches fastened by a common bar. Notice that green light text Amman and circuits the energized turns out. Power the guided missile weapon system by switching missile power to up position. Oh, there we go. Up position. Power the radio guidance transmission circuits by switching corresponding power switch to up position. Uh, it takes about 210 seconds for the tube radio guidance system to become operational and launch lock removed. Power the guidance unit, shortly called as GU, by switching guidance unit power to ON. It's located on the launch check panel, LCP, on the right side of the cockpit. After that, gyro motors go live, gyro heating activated, and guiding amplifiers are turned on to full power. Uh, we have three to four minutes until all systems are operational. Please don't switch and activate anything. Just wait and listen. Wait and listen to... The guidance system becomes operational at the moment the ready lamps are lit on both Missile Select Panel and LCP. The 
Scanner switches the observed switch to on position, opening the external flaps, which protect the GU camera lens glasses. Clinking to the GU monocular eyepiece, the operator observes and searches for the target controlling the view by the control handles. The search is carried out using the wide view mode of the GU optical system, which magnifies the image by 3.3 times. For target designating and acquisition, the operator switches to narrow view with 10x magnification. Press spacebar to continue. I note that GU side mark constantly moves while GU controls are not centered. The operator controls the speed and direction of the GU side mark movement. This solution helps much when trying to keep a mark on the moving target from the in-flight platform. Press space bar to continue. So there has to be a way to see into this. If I missed something. Upon the target designation, the gunner select the proper missile launcher by rotary on the missile selection panel. If the selection of hard point is successful, the missile launcher lamp turns to lead state. Next, the internal transparent lens glasses are opened by switching the <coughs> side door switch. These doors were used during observation to protect optics from dust. Clicking to eyepiece again, the gunner puts the side mark on the target and reports to pilot commander, target acquired. Press space bar to continue. Obviously missing something here. But that's all. That's all. Zoom. Cover still closed. We'll miss our sight hole. So let's see. Hi there, I am doing fine. Just going through some tutorials for the My24. No idea what I'm doing. I'm just waiting for this to line or something. Oh, there it is, it's done now. After the gunner's report, the pilots steer the helicopter so that movable computing crosshair from the gunner's GU on his side glass becomes enclosed by the inner fixed screen of the site. At that, the red light arc segment turns on in the top of the gunner's GU view, and constant high tone is heard in the headphones of both aviators. At the distances of 1000 to 500 meters, the gunner fires the missile and keeps the GU side mark on the target until hit. Press space bar to proceed. I uh, note that in order to keep constant target acquisition from the gunner's seat during the missile run, the pilot should constrain the helicopter within the following limits. 
direction, plus minus 55 degrees. Beach from minus 20 to 50. Roll 20 degrees either side. In the case of oversteer in that situation, the proper red warning lamp limit maneuver lights up to urge the pilot to east. The second note on a similar issue, while external camera flaps are open and gyros uncaged, the gunner should turn off the observe switch prior to the helicopter's sharp turn and maneuvering. That will save gyros from jamming and imminent time warp the rear line procedure. Press space bar to proceed. The guidance system is operational. Both ready lamps are lit on the panels. Please switch the observe switch to on position. Opening the external flaps, press left hold plus A to cling to the eyepiece of the guidance unit monocle. Uh, left hold A. Uh huh, okay. While using GU Monocular, you can move the view by joystick, keyboard, or a mouse. Press left Win plus H to show the hint on the commands being used. As it was said earlier, you control the speed and direction of the side mark visible in the GU Monocular. The fire moves the control, the faster it moves. Tiny red on screen arrow guides you in that procedure and might be hidden using left all plus S for real experience. Uh, get the monocular view to the target range marked with red smoke. Then use left control plus X or mouse wheel to set a 10x zoom and designate a target. Press space bar after you do so. I don't know what done. Get it. Oh, okay, I see. Right. Just aim at anything with these keys. Is this why you never see anyone being the co pilot? I'm hoping to draw backlight on or off. Orange filter. Right, Alt. Oh, okay. Um, laser protect. Right, Alt G. No idea what that does. Alt S. Anyway, let's just keep going. <laughs> You can launch the missiles from 1,000 to 5,000 meters. Compare the visible vertical size of the target with the scale consisting of a pair of inverted T marks on the left side of the circular view field. 
Each mark is designed for the average dark height and labeled by the corresponding distance number at which the vertical size of the target fills the gap between T and the horizontal line. Uh, for example, if the target fills a gap below 10, the distance to target is 1,000 meters. Designate a target as a valid tank object. Then press left alt plus A to move away your eye from the monocular. So we'll follow a target to have. Right there, and then left alt A. Look to the missile select panel and rotate the missile selector to any valid station. Ensure the missile and launcher lamp is lit. protecting side lens glass doors by moving the side door switch to up position. Now the amber doors open lamp becomes lit to the left of the switch. Cling to the monocular again using left alt plus A. When the movable computing crosshair from the operator's guiding unit, shown on the pilot ASP-17 side, is placed inside the fixed ring the red light arc becomes visible in the operator's monocular. That means the hero's noise is aligned with the line of the GU side and conditions to fire the missiles are met. In addition, the constant high tone is heard in the headphones of both aviators at that moment. Press keyboard key 1 to get into the pilot seat and check how the movable computing crosshair looks and placed compared to the... Uh, as we said earlier, it's the pilot's task to steer and place the computing crosshair inside the fixed ring on the side. In reality, this is being done after the gunner's report target acquired. So, we are ready to launch the missile. Switch back to the gunner's seat by pressing 2, please. Then cling to the monocular. Use a joystick, keyboard, or a mouse to steer the side view to the tank position, smart with smoke. Change magnification to 10x to zoom into the tanks, and check if the distance within the specified launch range. Place the center side pack onto a suitable tank. Ensure the red arc is lit and the high pitch sound is heard. Launch the missile using right control plus space and keep the sight on the target all the way the missile runs. What's the red arc? I don't see a red arc. Right control space. Let's just go for it. Launch confirmed. Target destroyed. Uh, cling away from the monocular. Left alt plus A. As long as the missile has hit the target, switch off the guidance transmission by pressing the release radiate button on the control unit base. Or press left alt plus R. Switch off the guidance transmission by pressing the release. Select another missile on the missile selector panel and attack the next target using the same procedure. Got to set up some proper keys for this. Launch confirmed. Uh, we 
we should mention that the game supports the possibility to control aircraft and operate the weapons simultaneously by one pass. A special AI aviator is added. His name is Petrovich. He may act as a pilot or gunner depending on the current player role, taking part of another missing crew member. So, if you are a pilot, Petrovich act as a gunner. You command him when and where he should search, and Petrovich is commanded via a special on-screen interface. Press left control plus V to activate it. You see the on-screen command interface. The color of the box frames corresponds to the current Petrovich gunner mode. Red, weapons desert. Yellow, weapon arming. Beige, fire and command. Green, weapons free to fire at will. Use left control plus W to command weapon arm. Weapons Press the space bar to continue when ready. Interface understands up, left, right, down commands which currently correspond to WASD keyboard keys. These commands might be conveniently assigned to the joystick hat via Mi24P Petrovich menu input list. When Petrovich interface is enabled by using left control plus V, the head control will be overtaken by interface and released back to your normal assignments once the interface deactivated by next left control plus V press. The up, left, right, down commands can be sent as short and long presses. To add a Petrovich gunner to designate the targets in desired direction, move your view there and send short up command with short pressed W. Looking for targets. Petrovich tries to find and designate targets after the command is received. If successful, the list of designated targets is shown. Send shot up or shot down commands using W and S keys to scroll the list. You may point another place on the surface to correct direction and send command again if nothing is found by the gunner. A listing choose the target to attack. Send short right command using the T key to designate a target for acquisition. Send shot down if you want to cancel the designation. Press spacebar to proceed with the lesson. Tracking target. Target on range, commander. Upon receiving the target designation command, Petrovich acquires the target and waits for your command to fire. Press right ALT plus space or squeeze the trigger to launch the missile. That didn't work. Launch confirmed. Oh, target destroyed. Target destroyed. Now cancel designation, pressing shut down and crunch the space bar to proceed. Crunch the space bar? 
can command Petrovich to switch to the weapon free mode. Petrovich won't wait for a special order to engage and fire at his will. Send a lock up command and watch the Petrovich interface mode go through. Petrovich will fire at will once the conditions for a launch are met. If weapons are disarmed, red boxes. The long cap command will arm the weapons. Please take the gunner's seat by pressing 2. And let acting is about oh. Petrovich fly the helicopter and is ready to receive your commands in this mode too. To send the commands, activate again the Helbert Petrovich interface. But this time the interface looks like HSI. Press left control plus V to show it. The HSI widget is complemented by speed, heading and altitude boxes. Below the widget, the current Petrovich flight mode box is situated. As we said earlier in the briefing, the FLT, HVR, HVRT and CBTM flight modes could be selected. Note that FLT means flight, HVR, hover, HVRT, translational hover, and the last CBTM means combat maneuver. Using the short left command, select the faulty mode and crunch this bar to proceed. Oh, okay, I see. Um, use short left and select flight FLT. Yep. Crunch the space bar. While in FLT mode, the following commands are recognized. Short up down, speed change, long left right, heading change, long <laughs> up down, altitude change. Short right, brings the command at low speed, Petrovich automatically switches to HVR mode. All FLT commands are active, but there is no translational speed. Once the speed increase command is received, Petrovich switches back to FLT mode. Uh, while in HVR mode, send short left command to switch for HVRT mode and press the spacebar to continue the lesson. Copy, speeding up. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna out of control. Speeding up. Copy, speeding up. Translational power. You can use the following commands to control lateral and longitudinal strafe of the helicopter with steady heating. Holding up, down, left, right. Command the helicopter to strafe in a horizontal plane. Shot up and down. Speed change. Shot right. Bring the command cross hand to select desired flight direction, and the second shot right confirms it. Shot left. Toggles the flight modes. Cling to the monocular IDs again, pressing left ALT plus A. Breaking right. Breaking left. When you are clung to the monocular, the Petrovich AI pilot switches to CBTM mode automatically. You, as a gunner, may control the flight direction of Petrovich by following commands. Shot up, turn to target designated. Long up, maneuver to acquire the target. Long down, turn away from the target. Shot left, switch to FLT, HVR, HVRT modes. Comply the following procedure for engaging while bank. Steer the GU monocular view to desired position. Then send short up command to order Petrovich to turn in that direction. Designate a target by placing a central mark on it and send long up command to align nose with GU line of sight. 
As you see the red arc lead and hear the high pitch sound, launch the missile and keep tracking until hit. Press the spacebar to hide this text from the screen. Now you have passed all major procedures to fire the guided missiles from both seats of Mi-24P. Len and how new skills. Start this lesson once again and more until you feel perfect. The lesson is over. Learn and build your own crew. Looking for targets. Searching. Searching for targets. Target acquired. Target in range. Engaging. Searching for targets. Target in sight. In range. Mission Guns and Rockets, the Sasmo will guide you through the unguided rockets. Employment and cannon firing procedures are MI 24P is armed with powerful 30 mil, blah blah blah, automatic cannon and a pair of C8 rocket pods. Uh, okay, can't see them, but okay. Welcome to the Guns and Rockets employment lesson. First, while staying in the convenient active pause conditions, we will prepare all systems and armament for engagement, then proceed with the action. We are sitting in the pilot seat. Press backspace to hide some obscuring control levers and obtain convenient access to the weapon control panel right in front of the pilot's knees. After that, switch on the gun sight. Now, look up to the ASP-17 VP sight. We should see a fixed, round-shaped sight grid reticle and the mobile crosshair marker. Adjust the side glass elevation. First, left-click on the adjustment stopper. Second, scroll the mouse wheel to obtain the desired elevation. Third, lock adjuster by left clicking on the stopper once more. Press space bar to continue. Come on, space bar. Uh, adjust the reticle intensity on the side glass. Locate the marker brightest knob on the right side of the side and the grid brightness knob on the front side. The good idea is to reduce fixed grip intensity so it is barely visible and does not interfere with the moving crosshair marker. Press space bar to continue. Oh, I see, okay. Look to the box on the side's left side. There are two switches. One for auto-manual deflection calculations. The next, named Sync and Sync, is used when deciding between moving or stationary target engagement modes. When in auto, select and sync to engage stationary, and sync to engage moving targets. In order to get automatic deflection and lead to aim on moving targets, the pilot selects Sync Auto Mode and keeps the crosshair marker stuck on the target for two seconds. After that, the proper lead and deflection are set for the moving marker of the side. We will engage the stationary targets today. Let's begin with manual deflection settings. Set switch to unsync main mode, and then press space bar to proceed. The accurate aiming in manual mode requires the pilot manually input correct vertical deflection and wind correction to the side. Use down up knob on the left and left right on the right side to input required fixes. Doing so, watch the corresponding scale scroll and the moving crosshairs loose on the side glass. 
Press this bar to proceed. Another thing which is of major importance for accurate aiming is a distance to target. It can be input automatically or manually by the range insert selector on the weapon control panel. If you set the range insert switch to auto, the distance to target will be computed based on current pitch, air and radar altimeter data. The man position of range insert switch requires the pilot input distance manually by the knob located right below the switch. Rotate the knob and check the range arc scale changes its length on the crosshair. Press press bar to continue. Available. 
Just switch the AUX doors light for that. It is located below the right instrument panel. Notice that two or four signal lights for AUX doors are lit at the bottom side of the weapon control panel. We have two SH rocket parts at stations 1 and 4. Uh, select rockets with a rotor switch in the middle of the panel. Look up to the ASP-17 VP side. Currently active weapon type is shown with the lamp AKT lead on the old-fashioned table-like display. The arc in the upright sector of the moving crosshair represents the range scale. Thin line corresponds to the distance from you to the place the piper points. The thick line corresponds to the effective flight zone of the selected weapon. When the right end of the thin line reaches the thick, the yellow launch ready lamp to the right of the side glass becomes lit. Uh, press space bar to proceed. Back to the weapon control panel. Press and hold launcher arm button until both LH and RH flaps are lit. Launchers are armed now and ready for action. The ripple quantity is defined by the position of the MG burst switch lever. Lettering is self-explanatory there, and short stands for 40 sounds from each part, medium means 8, and long 60 missiles. Press space bar to proceed. Rocket side selector is used when you want to fire single side only. You can select left, both or right parts for engagement. Press space bar to continue. Okay, enough for rockets. Let's talk about the cannon. Automatic, fixed, water cooled, double barrel, GSH 230K cannon is designed to engage light and medium armored targets, ground and sea, as well as aircraft and infantry. The cannon is selected by the rotor selector on the weapon control panel when positioned in fixed. Uh, the same as with rockets, the selected weapon is lit on a display box. This time it shows 30. The range scale of the moving crosshair now fits the cannon parameters. Press space bar to proceed. Where does it shoot 30? Seems with rockets the selected weapon is lit on the display box. I don't see it. This time it shows 30. I don't know, let's keep going. The cannon firing parameters might be set on the weapon control panel. MG burst defines the burst length. MG rate defines the cannon rate of fire. Increase means 2600 RPM, and decrease means 300 rounds per minute. Press space bar to proceed. with the cannon. Be ready to take control of the helicopter and press space bar to continue.
usual tactic of B-24 attack is low altitude stealthy ingress with a centered final. Uh, remember your current collective pitch value, then clean up by gently pulling the collective lure, maintaining altitude and speed. Reaching 200 meters of radio altitude, stop ascending by pushing the collective down to the beach you remembered. The firing range is located to the left from your course. Steer the helicopter to that direction. Designate target and with extra maneuver, place moving crosshair on the target. When in range, the yellow lamp lights on the side. At that time, press the large trigger button on your joystick, or bump right all plus points. You will probably reach speeds of 330 km per hour while shallow diving in attack. At this speed, the helicopter tends to constant right roll, so decrease the indicated collective pitch by 1-2 degrees. Release weapons, okay. And slow down by 10-15 km per hour. Now, you have learned enough on the subject. It's time for you to practice and act on your own. Destroy as many targets as you can with your guns and rockets. Good luck! Himself. 
Uh, let's select and prepare the weapons. Switch the fire control lever to on position. Enable signal lights to show stores available. Just switch the AUX stores light for them. Notice that two or four signal lights for the second and third hot points are lit at the bottom side of the weapon control panel. These are gun parts. Each gun part is equipped with two GSHG 7.62 and single EIP 12.7 machine guns with 1700 and 750 rounds respectively. There are three available firing modes. 12.7 mm firing only. 7.62 mm firing only. Both uh, 12.7 and 7. Uh, okay, we set all guns firing mode. The ripple quantity is selected by MG burst length switch. The middle position corresponds to long bursts and the guns fire continuously while the trigger is depressed. Two recharge switches are responsible for the reloading fastest activation in the case of 12.7 mm jamming. Press space bar to continue. Uh, look to the right ammo counter panel located below the pilot's door arc. Red lights corresponds to the guns which are ready for action. Mechanic counters 1 and 5 show the rounds remaining for 7.62 mm machine guns. We have a pair of each in every part, but counter serves for only the second and fourth counter. Show the ammo remaining for 12.7 mm guns. These counters decrement every five rounds, so multiply the numbers by five. The middle counter is responsible for cannon rounds. It decrements every two rounds, so rely on a two as a multiplier for a cannon. Press this bar to continue. Uh, now, back to the ASP-17VP side. Currently active weapon type is shown with the bright armor FXT MG sign lit on the old-fashioned display board. The arc in the upright sector of the side's moving crosshair represents the range scale. Thin line corresponds to the distance from you to the place the piper points. The thick line corresponds to the effective firing zone of the selected weapon. When the right end of the scene line reached the sig one, the yellow fire-ready lamp to the right of the side glass becomes lit. The maximum effective range for the machine guns is limited by 2,000 meters. Every tick on the thick portion of the arc corresponds to 250 meters. Uh, press spacebar to proceed. Why do I not have that one? What have I missed? What have I missed? The tiny triangle in the uppermost part of the moving marker indicates the current undesirable size sleep of the helicopter. Compensate for any helicopter sleep by the controls, thus to keep the triangle right on the vertical line of the moving marker. Press space bar to proceed. Turn that off, that's what's wrong. Um, and the brightness of that all the way up. Right, there we go. Better now. Uh, so that switch needs to be down. Auto mode. Maneuver the helicopter and place a fixed grid center on the target. 
The CCIP position will be calculated for current altitude and the moving crosshair will show the actual impact point for the selected arbor, based on radio altitude, current pitch and air data. The actual position of moving crosshair is constantly updated according to the position your line of sight points to. When in range, gently and quickly steer the helicopter, thus to place moving crosshair upon the target. Press fire. If your steering takes no more than 1.5 seconds, you will be quite accurate. At least, you will be very close. Press space bar to proceed. Remember two more six. Aim the moving targets in sync mode, for the ballistic computer takes a proper lead. To obtain that, keep moving crosshair on the target for about 2-3 seconds. When the yellow light to the right of the side base goes off, stop the firing, turn away and take another run. If you are ready to take the controls, press space bar and continue. Fire on range is right ahead. Note the red smoke marker. Fly towards the targets and fire the guns by pressing the trigger or using right all plus space. Uh, the best distance is 800 meters. Good luck. Um, last mission, grenade pods employment. In this lesson you'll become acquainted with the 30 millimeter Grenade. Cool. Whoa. Welcome to the firing range. Today we'll become acquainted with the right, through this a bit quicker. launcher bolt. We are in the convenient active ball state. This provides a good opportunity to prepare all the systems guns, huh? and uh, adjust the reticle intensity on the side bus. Locate the marker brightness knob on the right side of the side and the green brightness knob on the front side. The estimated side depression, wind age and moving target corrections for the grenade launcher are normally determined from the tables and entered to the side manually. With this in mind, the pilot turns the side's auto mine switch to mine position prior to making required adjustments. Side depression is entered by the red knob and displayed at degree scale on the left side of the side. Windage and moving corrections are entered by the Horis knob and displayed at thousand scale on the right. Lean to the left in order to see the degree scale. Rotate the right knob and set the pressure to negative value of 205, which is required for 500 meters firing distance at 200 kilometers per hour speed. After that, center your view back, num 5, and bump the space bar to get the lesson proceeded. The skill? Oh, in here. Ah, okay, I see. Uh, minus two degrees. Okay. Adjust the side base according to the target size. After that, the correct distance to target will be determined by the center gap between line markers. When the visible size of the target fills the gap, you are at the correct distance. Side base setting is determined by the formula. Base equal L multiply R. L, the known linear target size in meters. R, target observation and the firing distance is set by range finder controls on the weapon panel. The range insert switch, as far as the initial side adjustments are set, will fast steer the helicopter in such a way that the vertical line of crosshair is aligned with the target. Keep altitude between 50 to 
to 200 meters. They're closer the helicopter to the target, the greater the viewable size of the target inside. We have to place the people on the target. And when the visible size oh, of the target fills the gap between crosshair lines, depress the trigger. Press space bar to continue. I got it. Okay, so 500 meters. Right, I got it. Uh, now, set the weapon selector to GM-30 position. The grenade's rate of fire is quite low, so set the burst lens to long. In this case, the launcher continuously switch the fire control level to on position. The rounds remaining are displayed on a mechanical counter located to the lower light. The red lights report the written state of grenade launcher ports. Press the spot to continue. 300. Grenade launcher barrels are mounted at some positive output angle. This makes the grenades fly along the loft trajectory. As we've mentioned, the required sight adjustments are made according to the grenade firing table, which is available in the keyboard and the mount briefing pictures. In this lesson, the unlimited ammo flag is set, so you can try and shoot with various speed and range sight settings. Ooh. Maintain 200 km per hour while approaching. Open fire at 500 meters distance, as it is set on the weapon 